I'm about to build the boys and I have issue 78 of how let's build the Titanic will we be continuing the build of the hull now again there's not loads to do in this one um because it, it just it just isn't so touching the hull is is kind of minimal work but it's work that needs to be done there is more to do in this one than there was to do in the last one I mean the last one was literally one screw this one is four screws um, and again, the, there is the option of using the um, the washers. Now, if your screw is completely tight, you don't need to use the washer. If yours doesn't, use the washer. It just thickens it out. It, it means that you get that kind of tight bond that you want. So if you if you want to use the washer, use the washer. If you don't need to use the washer, don't use the washer. I am using 3-in-1 oil to ease the transition going in. You will find if you're doing that, you can probably get the screw tight enough without needing the washers. But um, without further ado, let's get into this, let's get this one built. If you are going to stick around for our Titanic talk, then this one we'll be talking about the Great Coal Strike of 1912 and exactly the impact that had on Titanic and also on a, on a lot of the passengers on board the Titanic. But let's get this open, let's get into this, let's get this built. Okay, so here are the parts that we get with issue 78. Let's open this up and have a look what we get inside. Uh, not a lot, I would imagine, again, that last one. So that is washers. Um, that is screws. Now we're going to be putting four screws into this one to hold together. Again, as I said, washers are optional. If yours is a loose fit, you need the washers. If yours is a tight fit, you can need the washers. Um, so this is the section that we are working on. This is my L9. And there we go. So you can get a good look at that one. Let's see the pause there. Okay, and we are working on this section of the ship. I'm going to spin this around and we can see exactly where this is going to go. Okay, so this is the section we're working on. Now, I can see from just glancing at mine, paint buildup is possible inside this one. So you may need your washers to get that kind of tight bond. Now we need to get this one to fit, which is always easier said than done when it comes to these whole pieces. But once it goes, it will go. So we're going to snap this one over. There we go. Wasn't so painful, was it? Right, so that's that one in. Let's get a closer look at this. So we are working with... These four holes here. Uh, now these are Allen bolts, and you know I feel about Allen bolts, but I'm not going to complain. I'm going to get them done. <laughs> just, just going to do as I'm told. Put my Allen bolts in like a good boy. Um, but yeah, I'm not a fan of Allen bolts. I, I make no, uh, make no bones about it either. All right, let's get one in the middle first to hold this in place, and then we will do the rest. So I am using three and one oil. So I've just touched the end of this uh, bolt into three and one to um to hold it in place and that is tight we don't i don't need to i don't need to wash those <coughs> right that's one and um we've got three more of these to put in so that's one done that's just come off in the oil again. Bloody thing. This is why I don't like Allen bolts. Everything about them is a nuisance. So just, just not a fan at all, in the slightest. At all, ever. Oh, God. Yeah, pig zero this, Scott. All right, let's put that one in. <sighs> I'm magnetizing this. <laughs> and breathe. All right, so <laughs> we're going uh, to screw this one in. At least the hull, the the keel isn't stopping it from from tightening. There's nothing obstructing it. At least with these Allen screws, there is nothing getting in their way, which is good. So there you go. That one's on. Yeah, happy with that, right? So I'm going to put another one in there. I'm going to get that done, and then we'll take a look at the last one. Okay, so we have the final one to put in, and it's going up there. So let's get this one in. Bloody hate Allen bolts. I'm not looking forward to doing the other side because we're going to be obstructed when we do that, but it is what it is. Let's get this one started this way. And we'll see if we need to use the washer. Hoping we don't. I think with three and one you get you can get these screws on a lot bloody further than what you can with uh without. Because you're not fighting against swarf, you're not fighting against paint buildup, it just it just threads straight through. So you don't have any issues. No, we don't. No, that's that's firm. There's no wobble there. That's good. Okay, excellent. Right, let's flip this one over, take a look. 
So that is how we are now looking, and it is looking long. So uh, we're looking good, looking real good. All right, mark a pen there. Um, we're looking, uh, yeah, we're looking lovely. So we've, we've got this side. Then the next two are pretty much a repeat of what we've just done. So we'll be adding more to the other side. So that's the section that's going to be going in next. Um, but once this is all done, I'll hold it up so you can see exactly how long it is. But this is long now. This is long. This is way over two feet. So um, we're definitely getting there with the hole. Let's have a chat. And that's that one done. There's not loads to do. I mean, it is four screws, but my God. I mean, okay, now we're getting, you know, <laughs> now we're getting big. So this is, um, this is impressive. Um, tightness wise, mine's fine. I don't need the washers. If you do need the washers, put the washers in. If you feel more secure, put the washers in, put the washers in. Um, it's never going to be firm, firm at this point because we're going to need the keel section to make this as firm as it can possibly get because it's going to connect to over to the other side. So because the length of it, you're going to have torque on it. That's going to happen. Just try to avoid that happening because we're not going to be getting the keel for at least two months. So, um, yeah, be conscious of that. Uh, we are going to be working on this side next. So we are going to be adding the two sections that are missing from here in the next two, uh, two issues of Hatchet's Build the Titanic. That is all for the, look at this. Come on. Look, it's come on. Look at that. Still going, still going. Um, can't wait till the next two pieces go on this. That is all for the build instructions. So if you're just sticking around for the build instructions, thank you for stopping by. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe if you haven't yet. It helps our channel massively. And we just like having you along for our journey because we are going all the way to the end of issue 140 of Hatchet's Build the Titanic. Um, if you stick around for our Titanic talk, we're talking about the coal strike. So the great coal strike of 1912 uh, and involved these guys. So for some background on this, what happened was, uh, before the strike, uh, there was no minimum wage for miners. So coal workers, anyone that worked in the coal industry, there was no minimum wage. Um, which meant that different mines and pits and whatnot could pretty much set the tariff of what they were going to pay you. And more importantly, how frequently they're going to pay you. So there was no minimum wage. So there was no guarantee of an income, basically. That's what this boils down to. So without a minimum wage... Um, it wasn't a case of, well, we're going to pay you way less than anyone else pay you an hour. And this is the men going, we want more an hour and striking to get it. That's not what this was. Um, what this was, was uh, they were being paid in some cases on how much they'd actually mined. Now, again, you might have, well, that seems fair. Not really, because it's not like you have the choice of going to the mine and go, we're going to, we're going to mine over here. Um, there's, there's a lot of factors to this. So if whoever's operating the car isn't isn't fast enough, you're not mining enough coal. Um, if you've got some supervisor's got you mining in the wrong area, you're not mining enough coal. If you're not mining enough coal, you're not getting paid. So these these are men that can't afford to feed their families. They can't afford to um, uh, to put a roof over their head because they're still taking the same amount of risk. They are still going down a pit. They are still breathing in that horrible crap down there. They're risking their health. It's a dangerous job but there's absolutely zero guarantee of an income at the end of it. So enough was enough. These guys realized, you know, the world depends on coal, on, on our coal. Certainly the United Kingdom did. Um, it, ne it needs the coal that we mine without it. The place would grind to a halt and how right they were. So they struck, they went on strike and it was basically, we need a minimum hourly wage. So we know that no matter what happens, if we work a full week's work, we get a full week's pay. We do an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. It shouldn't be based on how much coal we pull out the ground. That's on you. That's on your management and how, the way you want to do this. We'll turn up. We'll give you our time. You pay us at the end of it. I think that's pretty fair, don't you? It is tragic that 111 years later, uh, striking is is more common than it ever was. Um, that, you know, we really haven't learned from, from the past, but... That's what happened. So where this is relevant is that the country genuinely did come to a grinding halt during the strike because people can't warm their homes. This is in winter when this happens. So it's February, it's cold. Um, people can't warm their homes. But more importantly, uh, we're reliant on steam trains, which need coal, and we are reliant on steamships, which need coal. It's not just to heat our homes. People are now starting burning furniture to heat their homes. Um, we, we need coal to operate the transport system that we have um so it caused quite the uh, it caused quite the problem now the strike did actually end uh, about a week before titanic set sail but it caused that much chaos at this point that 
coal had to be i mean just because the strikes ended doesn't mean all of a sudden well now here's an abundance of coal they've got they've got you know a backlog to catch up on so coal had to be commandeered from other ships by white star line so titanic could launch so when titanic did launch it didn't have enough coal on board it did i mean it had a lot i think of four tons but it was it was nowhere near enough um for um for what they needed it, it wasn't enough it was enough to get to new york but in New York, they were going to have to re refill and then go back. So that's that's what happened. So to get this coal, they started taking it from other ships. White Star Line were quite the player. So what White Star Line want, White Star Line get. So they started moving coal from other ships to Titanic. As a result of that, people who had tickets for those other ships now had their voyages cancelled. So instead of going on the, the Oceanic, you're now upgraded to the Titanic. Instead of going on the Britannic, you've gone on the Titanic. So this was quite a big deal. It's like, wow, we've just been upgraded to the uh, the new luxury liner. Yeah, so the knock-on effect of this was a lot of uh, vessels were cancelled and people were moved to the Titanic. This, again, for two reasons. One, uh, because of the coal shortage. Two, Titanic didn't sell out. I mean, as much as we see her as this beautiful ship now, when Titanic launched, and I've said this before, and, and again, it is it is a, a cause for dispute with some people, it wasn't that big a deal. It just wasn't. I know history will have you believe that it was this massive deal that everybody would turned out to sit. They didn't. Um, Titanic was, was woefully undersold on its maiden voyage, thankfully uh, undersold on its maiden voyage, because had it have been at max capacity, then the... Um, the uh, the lives lost would have been far greater. There's a giant moth flying around. Please ignore it. Uh, the the loss of life would have been far greater. But it didn't. It didn't sell out. So they could upgrade people to Titanic and say, you know what, just cancel and move everyone to Titanic. Makes Titanic look better. It's got more people on board. And also, it's two birds with one stone. We can take the coal and we can ship. But as a result of that strike, uh, it did mean that that miners are now being paid fair. But it did mean that possibly two to three hundred people that were never going to be on the Titanic are now on the Titanic. Uh, so that strike did, in a roundabout top to way, cost those people their lives because they were never supposed to be on the Titanic. Um, so the the butterfly effect, the ripple effect, if you will, was massive. Um, and there was guilt amongst some of the um, the uh, the miners that struck, but. How were they to know that was going to happen? They weren't, were they? You know, because had Titanic had made its voyage, no harm, no foul. Um, it was not the minor strike that caused Titanic to sink. It wasn't. It was just an unfortunate coincidence that as a result of that strike, a few hundred people were moved on to the Titanic. Now, those people, I've discussed it before, were actually quite excited that they've been upgraded to Titanic. Uh, it's, you know, this is a big deal. This, this would be like going on a Boeing, you know, and then all of a sudden you're told you got on Concorde. It was a big deal. Um, so they were happy at the time, but it didn't work out that way, did it? Um, that's all for this one. Uh, thank you for stopping by. If you haven't yet, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps the channel massively. And uh, we just like having you along for the ride. We really do. In the next one, we'll be building yet more hull, um, which I think is a repeat of 77, uh, but we'll see. Um, and we will also be talking about boxing. There are boxers on the Titanic, and we're going to talk all about one of them. Um, and you will find out who he is in the next episode. So please swing by and join us for issue 79, which will be going up on the channel probably tomorrow now, if I'm honest. If you're watching this on Tuesday, it'll probably be up on Wednesday. Um, thanks for stopping by. In a world where you can be anything at all, just be nice. And I'll see you very soon for more from Hashettes Build the Titanic. I'll see you then.